If you are a graduate student and you are considering paying for grad school through taking on a TA ship, there's just so much more to being a teaching assistant at a university than just showing up and teaching undergrads. And not knowing these things can fundamentally impact how positive and generative your teaching experience can be. So today we are discussing the top 10 things that I wish I knew before becoming a teaching assistant at UCLA. Now, the first thing that I wish I would have known about being a TA is that a TA ship or being a teaching assistant is definitely a part of professional development as a graduate student. When I first started TAing, I saw it as an ends to a means. I took on TA ships because TA ships help paid for a certain amount of tuition, help give me health insurance and other types of benefits like a stipend to make living in Los Angeles and going to grad school just way more affordable. However, now after about four years of being a teacher, I realized that the types of courses that you teach throughout your graduate career is also giving you a certain level of training that is preparing you to teach and understand disciplinary approaches to education in academia. So what I mean by this is if I am taking a lot of classes willy nilly and not really trying to develop my TA experience to be focused or at least related to the topics that I care most about, then when I look back at my CV and I'm preparing to go and apply to jobs, it may look like I've never taught anything relevant to my research or relevant to the career path that I want to pursue. Now, luckily enough for me at UCLA, there's not a lot of people that teach the things that I do teach or have the educational background that I do. And so I accidentally ended up teaching a lot of Afro-Latin history, Latin American history, and ethnic studies courses, which is generally the path that I am most interested in. However, if I would have solely just focused on courses, perhaps in my department, then I would have focused on more art-based or art instruction course types that I am equipped to teach, but aren't necessarily the thing that I am most passionate about. So I say this to say, you don't always necessarily get to choose what classes you teach. And oftentimes it's kind of, you know, best of luck. And sometimes it does end up to be a hodgepodge of a bunch of different things. But if you understand that a TA ship is a type of professional development, then you can work more deliberately or strategically to pursue or accept certain TA ships based off of where you want to be at the end of the day or what disciplines or departments are you most passionate about so you can focus on what you care about and not have this long history of teaching things that you actually hate. The next thing that I wish I realized before becoming a TA is you have to do all of the readings that your undergraduate students are doing. Now I know you're probably at home like, duh. But I think knowing it and really understanding what that means in regards to coursework or workload is a completely different thing. And that's because, yeah, I kind of always realize I'm going to have to keep up with the course materials and coursework so I can support my students in the work they do. But what I didn't realize is I was organizing my weekly time for my homework and my assignments based solely on the readings that I was assigned. And I wasn't incorporating the fact that there were four other readings that I had to do that week so I could teach my section at the end of the week or on Friday. And so even though it wasn't the biggest of deal and after a couple of weeks I realized how to work it into my schedule, it can become a lot of work if you have a professor that really enjoys giving your undergrads a ton of readings or a ton of assignments that are busy work that you have to help facilitate or read through or all these other things. And that adds on top of your usual reading workload or your own academic graduate reading workload. And it is something just to be aware of, which leads to the other thing I wish I would have known. And that is grading takes way more time than you think. Now, unless you come from an education background or you've taught K through 12 before, it's kind of hard to know what is your grading strategy or grading process and how long it'll all take you. And if you're new, it is going to take you much longer than if you've been teaching and grading and doing this work for years. And so just like the reading workload, it's really important to make sure you are folding in time specifically around midterms and finals to grade your students work while also balancing whatever major assignments you have to do and whatever major readings you have to have prepared during these moments. Now this next one is one that you kind of know and you feel like you're going to do really well at and then when it hits the fan, it's way harder than what you think. And that is 
you are allowed and should advocate for yourself. Being a TA can take up a lot of time and there's a lot of miscellaneous things that you may not consider like office hours, responding to emails, meetings with professors, and the list can go on and on. And that can really eat into your personal time, your work time, your health, all these other aspects of your life can very easily become out of whack and in balance. And one of the best places or resources to use is your union at your university. So the moment that you see a TA contract, make sure you are looking for and inquiring for the union. There's also probably other departments at your university that talk about equity and diversity or harassment claims or things like that. And you just wanna be aware of who they are because if these things happen, you should and deserve to be protected. And these resources can empower you to protect yourself and even possibly your student. Now, I understand this may not be the most comfortable or easy conversations to have with the resources or your professors, but it's important to remind yourself that you deserve to be safe and you deserve to have work-life balance. And so to remember that advocating for your academics, for your personal safety, for your health is a right that you have and you're not a bad or selfish person for pursuing it, but rather a person who deserves to be protected. And that way can make your TA experience much more positive and generative than feeling overworked and not being able to support your students or feeling like you're not good enough or doing enough or you're always tired or you're not giving time for your partner. Now you have a way or by advocating for yourself, you have a way to make sure that everybody is being respected and is positively interacting with this TA experience. The next thing I wish I would have known a little bit earlier when I was becoming a TA is that you're qualified even when you're not. And that's because you got hired for the position. When schools are putting people into their TA positions, they are considering all aspects of you as an applicant. So even when you feel like you're not completely qualified for whatever TA position you have, I think it's important to remember that as a graduate student, you come in with a specific set of skills, be them critical reading skills or critical writing skills or facilitation skills. And all of these skills are important for your students and are something that you can teach and bring to the classroom setting. So even if you don't know everything about a given topic, by bringing the skill sets that you do have that are a part of the academic journey or the part of becoming an academic, that knowledge is what you can impart to your students and thus makes you qualified to be a TA. And at the end of the day, it's important to remember your professor is the professional. You are the additional material, supplemental material, that little added oomph to support your students. And by that alone, when you have a TA ship, even if it's outside of what you think you know, I guarantee that you will be able to succeed and figure it out and that you are in fact qualified. This next one is super important, especially if you are a first generation BIPOC graduate student. So much of our life experiences and the values that we have is to always help others. But when it becomes being a TA, it is important to remember that you are a TA, not a therapist. And what I'm really trying to say with this statement is that Students are very diverse and you're going to come across a lot of students and they're all going to have their own unique needs and desires and hopes and dreams and fears and concerns and you are only just one person. Even if you are going to school to be a psychologist, you haven't graduated yet and so you are not in fact a therapist. Again, thinking about how much time a TA ship takes up, it can become an additional emotional burden for you. And that can eventually lead to eating away at your mental health and your personal safety. And so instead of taking on this burden to try to fix all of our students' problems or to be there because we may be able to relate or we know somebody that has that issue or we just care a lot about our students, the best way that we can support our students is by being knowledgeable about what resources are on campus and who are the actual people that have the training, the bandwidth, and the support to help our students in the ways that they need to be helped. Which leads to my next one, and that is you are an employee, not a servant. And I don't know if you're starting to notice a trend, but a lot of the things that I wish I would have known before becoming a TA at a university is that as graduate students, 
people really do cross a lot of boundaries. And it's really, really easy to be caught up in being exploited, mistreated, or overworked. And so in this moment, after I've taught for four years, I've come to realize that creating boundaries is one of the most important parts of being a graduate student and being an academic student employee. So this means in regards to being a TA, you have to remember that you have an actual contract with specific responsibilities and specific hours that you are and are not allowed to work. And so if a professor is asking you to do things that are violating your contract, that is extra beyond your hours, or that is inappropriate for your job responsibilities, then you have every right and should tell them no. And again, I'm saying this with a lot of conviction, but I understand that that's not going to be easy the first time around. But I guarantee if you get good at telling them, hey, that violates my contract, or I'm sorry, I don't have the capacity to do that. It will make your life as a graduate student and as an academic student employee just so much easier. Not to mention, you will start to notice that you have more positive relationships and experiences in relation to academia by developing these boundaries. If strong boundaries are not created, it is very easy to start to develop institutional trauma, feeling like you're not good enough, feeling like nobody respects you or cares about you or wants you there. And that is not useful or conducive to trying to succeed or get your graduate degree. So even though there might be awkward conversations, awkward silence, or a little tension in the room, it is so important to be familiar with your contract, what your responsibilities are, and draw hard, consistent boundaries when professors or your employers or faculty try to violate them. And professors are such an important part of the TA experience that it is my next thing I wish I would have known. And that is a professor can make or break your TA experience. You could be somebody that is the leading expert or the only one in your whole institution that knows a specific topic. But if you have a professor that is toxic, not supportive, grumpy, or just not a very good person, it can make you feel like you are the worst TA to ever exist. On the flip side, you can have a professor that is super, super nice and kind and inviting and builds you up so much in fact that you feel so empowered to pursue other types of educational experiences or trainings or what have you. And I would also say it's important to keep these notes of who's a good professor to work for and who's not, because as you pursue more TA positions, you can start to deduce which programs or which classes are just not worth teaching and which ones are the ones that you would enjoy so much more because this professor is teaching it. And that again can just help make your TA experience so much more positive. This next one actually really caught me off guard and that is being an educator or teaching more generally is not a well-respected or supported part of academia. Now this always felt very counterintuitive because so much of thinking about colleges or universities is students are learning from professors. But when you are at a research one institution or a large institution like UCLA, professors are actually getting paid more so to do their independent research. And so for a lot of professors, teaching is more of a burden than a lifelong dream to help students. And this is important to know as a TA because that might mean if your professor really does subscribe to that type of thinking, you may have a lot more work or carry a lot more weight of the class than what you may expect. And the professor may be a little more flippant or careless about the way that that professor teaches the course. And that can import, impact how your students feel. I also bring it up because as somebody who does in fact care a lot about pedagogy, teaching and working with students and equity in education, I just want to make sure I do not say or do not let go unsaid that teaching is super important and our students experience is super important. So this being a reality of academia should not be a reality of you as an educator. A professor may tell you that teaching doesn't matter. A professor may tell you that it's not a respectable part of the job, but you can refuse that and really understand the importance or how teaching is important to our research or our academic goals. Even if all you care about is your professional goal, which is to be a researcher or to do your research, it's important to realize if you're gonna be a professor, a big part of that is to impact students. And so 
to start early to work against that internalization that teaching isn't important is an important thing to know before becoming a TA because it matters. And the better you get or the more you work at it, the easier it gets. And eventually you will be, you know, a tenured professor working hard and doing wonderful things for your students. But it starts with your mindset and it starts with recognizing that Academia doesn't necessarily support the educational, pedagogical approaches of teachers, but it doesn't make it any less important. The next thing that I wish I would have known before becoming a TA is that you don't have to know everything. Like I said a little bit earlier in this video is that so much of being a TA is about the skill sets that you bring, your analytical skills, your research skills, your facilitation skills. And so if you are in a situation where students are asking you hard questions or they're looking for support on readings and you don't quite understand it, that doesn't make you dumb and it doesn't make you bad at your job. But instead you have an opportunity to model to your students how to resolve issues like that. This is also to bring up that independent of how your professor may be or their ideology on teaching it's also important to remember because you won't know everything that your professor is a resource and so when students need extra help that you don't have or require extra support that you don't have the time for you can send your students to the professor for support and they are an extension of you and you are an extension of your students. And so by connecting those two communities, the professor and students, you are also demonstrating that you don't have to know everything. You just have to know who does know the thing you don't know. And I also think it's important to model to your students that even when you don't know everything, you can still engage academically or you can still work to learn, which is why we're all in school anyway, is not to know everything, but to learn the things we don't know. And so by creating an affirmative and positive environment like that, you encourage your students to be more successful, to understand the role of education and the process of learning more organically, while also taking off that pressure from yourself to be the world's most prolific teacher that's ever existed. Now, if you're interested in learning more about what does it mean to be a TA or how to get a TA ship, I would check out my past video on what is a TA. And if you're just interested in more grad FAQs, I have a grad playlist just for that. If you found at least two of these things useful, hit a thumbs up and any questions are free to be in the comments. When you comment and engage with my video, it helps a small YouTuber like me continue to grow. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.